or was Dr. Mason? Or just what kind of challenge does Javon Small provide? It seems like he can score the ball really well and he can facilitate a little bit too. Javon's playing as good as any guard in the league. I mean, look at what he's doing for their team. He's, he's leading them in scoring. He's almost leading in rebounding. He's like fractions off, assists, steals, um, just a, an all around, both ends guard. Um, does a ton for him. I mean, he's shooting it well, he's distributing it well, he's guarding well. Um, just a terrific guard, one of the best guards in our league. The weirdness of like the Big 12, it feels like every time you catch somebody, they're coming off a loss. How much does it help for it to be like a rivalry game for you guys to also have that, um, to like match that physicality out of the gate in this thing? I thought, I mean, I think they're playing really well. I mean, I've watched them on tape, but I thought they, I mean, the physicality, the way Houston plays, and I thought they just matched it right back. And, uh, you know, you know, just for us, it's, uh, we know it's a big game, every game is. I mean, we don't look at it like how we're catching people. Like you just asked if it was off catching people off a loss. I mean, that could happen all the time in this league. I mean, you're trying to go on one game win streaks in this league. You know, one game at a time, one game win streaks. Um, so uh, we, we know they're gonna be super physical. Um, we, you know, just got a lot of respect for them and we just, we just know they're gonna be coming in here really physical. James? Porter, you know, they've won two straight games, and so they're playing, or two out of their last three straight games. So they're playing some of their best basketball coming in, uh, but they don't have their best player, but yet they seem to have rallied and playing better. So how do you view their team as a whole? I think I think they got great great pieces. I mean, their guards, I mean, Michael Wright is just, just so physical. We, we saw him last year a lot. Um, you know, Javon, and then... Um, I think Brandon inside, he's playing as good as, you know, the top freshmen in our league, one of the premier big men in the country, but in our league, he's done really well. Um, but I think they got some other pieces. I mean, guys that are just really playing, you know, Hicklin comes off the bench, he can really shoot it. Um, Connor Dow is playing, he's really tough, he's getting a lot of minutes. So Keon Williams, we just know him. He's just really, really physical, high energy, rebound, athletic. So, um, you know, I think they're moving the ball. I mean, they move and space the ball as, as good. They keep playing offense. You know, they continue after the play, you know, as good as anybody. The ball's moving, uh, uh, you know, really well. Uh, Javon and Wright get that ball moving. They're veteran, stronger guys. You're coming off a great game defensively. Can you do that again? Can you can you keep that going? <laughs> that's, that's what we hope. We hope. We're, we're all looking for consistency. And, uh, you know, this league makes you – this league, you know, it's easy to talk about consistency. But this league makes it – makes the, that challenge hard to be consistent because there's so many obstacles to being consistent. So, um, you know, we just, we, we, we obviously were better when we're stacking our defensive efforts. Um, and uh, that's, what, that's, that's, our, that's what we hope to do, that's what our guys, you know, when you play like that defensively, you ask, why would you do it any other way? Um, but sometimes the opponent has something to do with it. Um, uh, going off, uh, off of that, you know, since you have been up and down during the last couple of weeks, have you found maybe something you think is the key to be more consistent? Something that you can bring during practice to let, to let you know that, okay, we're going to be able to stack this more? You know, I, I thought, so two out of the last three games, Kansas State and this one, Central Florida, we just did, like I said, we didn't get the rhythm, couldn't get stops. And a lot, some of that was us, some of that was Central Florida. So it's going to be like that and it's, it's, um, in this league. So, um, you know, for us, you know, I, I think it starts with, you know, I think – um, Jalen Moore and Rivaldo Soares, their energy level. I think Los and Javion, when those two those two guys are playing with really good energy in those games, um, you know Otega, he, he's got to be a, a, a you know elite defender for us. So um, for us, it's just you know I think for our guys that they're on the same page defensively, we got to stack stops um, and not let it dictate you know our offense and, and everything. So as far as any key, I think our, you know I just. Um, you know, I just there's not really one key. It's just they, they guys know what we got to do defensively against Oklahoma State. I mean, and, and we, we got some, some outstanding guards. They're big. I mean, Brandon's. I mean, with 20 against Kansas, I mean, he can. He's not a lot of bigs have done that against Kansas. Colton, or you talked about resiliency and bouncing back after a couple losses. Have you seen that same kind of buy-in this week after a win? And kind of just the same urgency still there. That that's that's what we talked about. We can't let winning change how we do things. Um, just like how you can't let losing, but like we've, our win, I thought we were, you know, we come back from Central Florida late Saturday night, Sunday's prep, we, you know, was, was all about the next game. And you, you, you can't let winning change that. And it hasn't. 
yesterday. We're about to practice today. And, and you just can't let winning change your focus, your prep, especially in this league, the way it goes. So, um, yeah, that's been a focus about how we handle a win. Jesse, we'll go to Chris. Uh, Porter, you mentioned Otega for a guy like him. I know he's been a little up and down offensively, but what have you maybe seen from him, and what does his mindset need to be heading into the next couple of weeks? You know, Otega's improved so many parts of his game, his, his handles. His, he's got to understand that, like, there's a ton of ways to help you win games. You know, and if his shot's not falling, um, man, he can be the best defender on the court. He can be an offensive rebounder. He's had huge offensive rebounds for us. I mean, USC and Cincinnati come to mind. There's really ways he can help. Plus the experience. He's been on the floor a ton. So he, you know, not to put pressure on himself if he's not scoring, to realize, man, there's a ton of winning plays. For instance, Latre Darthart. I think Latre made one basket. But when you break down that last 10 minutes of that BYU game, Latre made like four or five huge plays, huge 50 50 balls. He went up against their 6 11 kid and came down with a 50 50 ball. Just intangible winning plays. That's what, that's what we guys got to have. You, when you, I feel like we're deep. I think we're balanced. So there's going to be nights when some one other guy has more points. We just got to stay, stay focused and energetic about winning plays. Chris? Yeah, Coach, I imagine you saw a fair amount of Brandon Garrison when he was at Dell yeah, City. Are you surprised at all and impressed with how much he's grown and how quickly he's grown making this contribution? I'm not surprised, um, and I am impressed. Uh, I think they've done a great job with them uh, skill development wise. I think he's gotten stronger. You can just see his shoulders down there. Um, and that's what that's what the joy of his that he can do is freshmen play through mistakes. There, I don't even know if there's going to be five freshmen on the all freshman ballot. I mean, I can think of like four freshmen that I think are playing a lot. All right. You know, Iowa State, Baylor, Kansas, and Brandon, I, I, I could be wrong on a couple more, but there's not a lot of freshmen playing. So what, what happens with the freshmen that do play? They get to play through mistakes and grow. And, and that's what he's doing. You can just see that. And uh, so I, I hope he takes a night off um, because he's, he's, doing, he's doing great. But, um, you know, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for him. I mean, we, we know all about him. I mean, I think he's a very good player. Guys have seen him on tape, seen him on TV, watched him, and, uh, and, and knows, knows what he can do because he can do a lot. Josh? Yeah, Porter, obviously a lot of new guys from last year's team. Most of them aren't from Oklahoma. So do you, do you take a second to kind of tell them about Bedlam and stuff like that, or do you just – like it's an old game or no, I mean, they, they, they know the rivalry. Even though they weren't here, they, they know it. There's been a lot of talk of it. They watched the, 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 the lead up of the football bedlam. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they saw that. They weren't, you know, they were naive and head in the sand when that, that was going on. So they definitely know about it. Um, and so it's a combination of that and to know that, you know, every game has a lot of stakes for us. And uh, I think our guys are excited. They got a lot to play for. Holden? Uh, yeah, Porter, I think. Yesterday, Mike Boynton said that you and him have talked a little bit about trying to keep this game going in future years. He said it's probably unlikely for next year, but do you, is this a game you want to keep going? Yeah, we've talked to Mike. I, I, I think why not? I mean, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a lot to the state, and uh, it's been a rivalry. You know, there'll be a lot of things semantic-wise to go, you know, to kind of get done, but um, why not for the future? Why, why, why? I just think, I think it's something I'm, I'm not against. I don't think he's against. It's just figuring it out. Figuring it out, I think that's going to be the biggest key is um, that. But uh, it's, it's been a, a meaningful thing for the state um, in all sports, so um, I don't know why not. And then just the way the Texas game went earlier this year and Bedlam last year, do you feel any added pressure just to, to get a win here at home against we're, the rival? We're, our, this win is, is about this Big 12 conference race, um, and that's, that's being honest. Um, we know it's a lot of stakes for it. That's where we want to be. We're in a position that the, every game has is a lot of meaning for us, um, and we want to stack wins. We had a great win the other night. We want to, you know, obviously both teams are going to come in here playing their tails off, and that's our focus. This 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 race, um, the Big 12 Conference race, stacking wins, and uh, that's what's been talked about in our locker room. Back right. Uh, you guys will be celebrating Toby Keith tomorrow. What does that mean to you, and what does that mean to the rest of your team? It means a lot. I mean, I, I, obviously, um, the BYU game was fresh off the day we lost them. And um, a lot of emotions gone through, and now it's been a couple days, and still those emotions are, you know, it's just, it's awesome to see the whole world reflecting from celebrities in all areas. Um, you know, whether it's the music injury, whether it's, it's media, you know, seeing uh, media celebrities with their talk shows do things, whether it's the military, whether it's all the charities that he's done with, 
of the, the amount of different areas of outreach that are celebrating his life. Um, that is a legacy, um, and we'll be celebrating that tomorrow here at the arena as well. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'll be celebrating that, that legacy a long time, not just tomorrow. Any additional questions for Coach? All right. Thanks, everyone.